Hey, this is Brian from Logic Pro Hacks. I wanted to do just a quick little walkthrough quasi tutorial about a EXS instrument that I built using this guitar right here. Yes, you can see my little toes pop it in there. And this is an Ovation Celebrity Acoustic Electric Guitar and the model number was a CS257. It was basically, it was a really nice Ovation guitar. I mean, it had a soft shell case. I mean, it, it really sounded very nice. I actually found it at the local pawn shop for around $200, something like that. I'm not really a guitar player, but I really liked the sound of it when I played it. Decided, you know, let's go ahead and just sample it anyways. That's the guitar I sampled, and here it is. Let me go ahead and open it up. And you can see, right in here in the EXS instrument, I basically I sampled every single note that you could possibly get off this guitar, from the very top string all the way down to the very high string. You know, you got your E1, your C2. You know, it goes on and on. Now you'll notice that, you know, I'll have like the same E and and the same D but it would have been a different combination of the strings you know because the way the guitar works you'll end up hitting the same on if you were broke it out on a, on a piano scale it would end up looking like this you can see how you got all these these guys now you're gonna say all right well what's going on here how, how come you can't really play a guitar that way well what i did was is in excess there's there's this thing called round robin and what it does is it alternates between the different notes. So if it played this one, then it's going to go to the next one. So let me, let's go ahead and bring this out. See, I have round robin. I broke them out in groups here. Got round robin in this group. And then you have this group. This group. You can see how it highlights. This one. This one. This one. This one. Yeah, you know, a lot of time went into making this guitar instrument. So as you open it up here, you'll see that I have all these different zones. Now what I did is I created different zones and different groups. Is how round robin works is what you have to do is every group of notes within the section of the guitar I created, I put them in groups. And then I also created this thing called group assignments. And if we go in here in groups, you could see there's a trigger. See, it's, it's not going to let me bring it out, but it's select by group by. So you, the type is all groups here. But then down here, what I did is I, I had it alternate, you know, to the different groups. So that way, when it's playing, I have it triggering the round robin triggering the various groups what i did is is the very first group i didn't have it set but the second group to trigger i had it set to the following group so we go in here zones it's the next group next group so for example i have round robin two note one and two all right so if i go into my my group settings we look for for those two, two note one and two note two. Go to view, group select by. You could see that the first one is not set. The second one is set to two note one. So once it triggers to the next one, then it'll trigger back. To show this to you is if we just go back into zones, and say C2, if I hit it again, and again, again like that, it's going back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And if I go over here to the, to the D one, which has three different notes for that D, see how it just alternates back and forth? 
And then we'll go to this one. So you kind of tell how I have it going. If we go into groups, I wish they made this thing a lot easier to see. That's the one thing about EXS. And it doesn't let me move out. I think it has something to do with the ScreenFlow program I'm using. So anyways, just remember your base group doesn't do anything. You set it to as nothing. And then your secondary group, I have it set for my first section. And then my third group, I'll set it to the second section and the other one. And so it's it's kind of like, so that one is the four note group. How I have it set is four note one doesn't have anything set. Four note two will go to four note one. And four note three will go to four note two. And four note four will go to four note three. So it's kind of like this one is going to zero. This one is going to back to one. This one's going to two and this one's going to three, if that makes sense. Once you set it that way, if we go into zones, you can see where's the four note one, uh, one, one, two, three. See so that one hit four note one and it goes to the zero, it triggers the zero. And then when you hit it again, it's now on one. It's gonna hit two, two. When you hit again, it should hit three, and it should hit four, and it should hit five. There's my four note five up at the top for some reason, it's up there. And then it should go back down to zero again. The excess seems to make it a little harder than normal. So let's let's try to go over this one more time. Let's go back to groups and let's try the five note one group. Never mind the name. This is just my my way of naming groups and and I'm I'm always backwards. So five note one I have set to to nothing right there. Five note two goes to five note one and five note two is go to five note three. So it's kind of like you just Think of it as a minus down for your groups. And that way, when you get back down to here and you start triggering them, so it should work perfectly. Now, the way I have it alternating is I just have it go up, up and down the scale because pretty much all the notes are, are the same. So I hope this will, will help if anybody out there is trying to do round robin. That is my EXS instrument for the Ovation guitar that I sampled. I actually sold the guitar on eBay, so I don't have the guitar anymore, but I was more interested in sampling this guitar. You know, I just add a little bit of fatness, cut off, maybe a little tiny bit of attack. I could probably take that down. Release, uh, poly, so I could play full chords. So it's a very versatile instrument. The reason why I'm making this video is because I want to put this up on my eBay site, Logic Pro Hacks eBay user, and I'm going to put this on sale and it'll help support me make more and new interesting instruments. I'll go ahead and I'll, I'll attach it to this template. So here's the cool template. We'll go ahead and play it. I'll show you how the round robin is working as it's playing. So let's go ahead and go and start it at the front here. MIDI file is just basically your your standard MIDI file you get in the logic loops. It's like a, a Latin type of MIDI file. I may have tweaked it to fit, kind of just make it flow a little bit better. Here it is. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> 